Over 1 million cinema lovers have already subscribed to Film Companion. What are you waiting for? Hit the bell icon and join our film family. I think I, if I lost a role, I was not good enough for it. I don't think it was because I was too pretty for it. I have to ask, do you miss Bollywood? I do. I do. I made some great friends there. Still keep in touch with them. And yeah, I miss it. I miss seeing them. And I miss Bombay, I think, the beautiful city. Hi, Fawad. It is so lovely to have you back on Film Companion and back on Indian screens with a Zindagi original on Z5. You know, Thank just you. what I've been told about this show. This is all that I have, I, all the information I have at this point, okay, that it is, you're playing a single parent. Uh, it's a sort of a blend of supernatural with magical realism. Uh, it's about loss uh, and love. Uh, and it's being directed by Asim Abbasi, who of course directed the much acclaimed Churels and Cake. Is there anything you can add to this info or is this all you're allowed to tell us? I think that's all I'm allowed to tell you. That. As in, I can't even tell you the title of the show because uh, as far as it, as far as I'm concerned at this point, it's an untitled show right now. So I'm not allowed to leak any more information than that. What's to say though, yeah? Um, Sadam Sahi, that's show, man. <laughs> um, no, but I've, I've, uh, it's, it's, well, I, I, it's been an amazing experience working with this wonderful cast and crew. There's one thing that I can definitely say about it uh, is that when I was leaving this set, maybe I didn't get to know everyone uh, a lot on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but most of them I did. Mm -hmm. um, we spent some great times together. And on the day when I was leaving, I told them that after Kapoor and Sons, this is probably one of those projects where I feel that, you know, like I've made a family on this Aww. song. That's and a lovely. lot of a lot of positive energy went into making it. I felt the positive vibe, and I really love these guys. So uh, this project is that dear to me and uh, near my heart. That I can tell you. And I feel that every time when when something has a positive vibe in it, it, it translates well on screen. That's all. Yeah. Really like it. yeah, this is true. Now, Fawad, you haven't done any major film roles since. Right? You, of course, shot for Mola Jat and Nilofar, but those films haven't released yet. Uh, does this create any sort of sense of insecurity that you're not seeing yourself on the big screen? Or is all the rest of the work that you're doing and there is a lot keeping you very busy? Hmm. <laughs> I am an extremely lazy worker. Um, if I could have it my way, it'd be raining money without me even moving a finger. I'd be very honest. So, no, I, I, I really, I, I love the work that, that I've been a part of. I've never been, what can I say? I've, I, I've never been too worried about how much I'm doing, uh, as opposed to what I'm doing. Um, and that's why, uh, I don't know, it just, I, life has been kind of weird. Um, there has been a long hiatus, but then came along COVID and then we were all stuck at home. So somehow or the other, it's just been one long party and I've been having a great time at home with my uh, wife and kids, uh, my friends, family and everyone. I'm enjoying life. And during that time, I actually shot three films. So I know this much that I know I've been away for five years or six years or whatever number of years it's been. But when the dam breaks, there's going to be a lot of stuff to watch. And I think uh, but insecurities are going to But insecurities are for No. 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 Like I, I would say it's very wrong for any person to say that they've never been insecure. That's very, that's, that's not true. Yeah. But the theme, though, I think, I don't know, as you, as you grow older, maybe some people become more insecure. Maybe some people start letting go of those insecurities. I think I'm the latter. And I just feel calm. That's it. I just like to have good conversations with people, good relationships with people. And I think that's the main driving motivation uh, for me. That's the main motivation 
for getting back to work, for meeting people, getting out there. As long as that's happening, I think everything else is correct. Yeah. You don't have to be number one to enjoy life. No, certainly not. Tell me, uh, is there any clarity on dates on when this dam might break? Mm. Well, as I mentioned earlier, uh, because of COVID, um, the two films that are actually pretty much ready and they're in the box, and everything's been done, sound, maybe just a little bit of tweaking, and that too because the, the, the creators now have more time on their hands. Yeah. So um, other than that, two films are packaged and ready. There was this one film that I did with uh, Bilal Ashari, which is called Malaja, which took the life out of us. Uh, but it was well worth it. Uh, I read it's the most expensive film ever made in Pakistan. Yeah, I just that the, ex, the word expensive is just no. I, I, I one I don't like saying that or mentioning that. And even if that were the case, I think that's very unimportant in the in the yeah, entire. It's much more than that. It's much more than that. Yeah. Um, our budgets are restricted here and again because uh, the industry. Uh, especially before COVID, is expanding, expanding, and then suddenly it starts contracting again because of you know cinemas closing down. So in that sense, yes, it is the most expensive film made in recent times, and a lot of effort went into it. But I think what makes it expensive is the amount of compassion and heart put into the film, and it shows. So uh, we haven't cut corners, um, and I hope that it turns out. To be something that uh, people really enjoy, and I, I have a really strong feeling about that. So I'm looking forward to Mona Judge, and then um, I did another film, which is uh, is a bit of a political satire, not a political satire. I don't know if you want to really box it in that, but it's a uh, it's a comedy. It's an action comedy. It's directed by a very dear friend. Uh, it's his name is Dustin Kurechi. It's called Money Back Game. Yeah. <clears throat> so that and the third film, uh, Nilofer. Um, which is our home production, which is our first production. Um, it's a very simple love story. So all these three films are completely different from one another. And I'm just waiting for the audience reaction to come in when they see a different character and a different version of me in all those three films. Um, and the fact that those films, I think, are going to be amazing. So nice. when the dam breaks, I think, It'll be fun. I think it'll be fun. Salaam aayega. Salaam aayega. I have to ask, do you miss Bollywood? I do. I do. I made some great friends there. Still keep in touch with them. And yeah, I miss it. I miss seeing them. And I miss Bombay, I think. It's a beautiful city. In fact, all the cities that I've been to, I've had a lovely experience. So yeah. You know, your IMDb page, Fahad, also includes Ms. Marvel, which is, of course, uh, Marvel's first titular Muslim character. Now, I know you're not going to say yes, no, anything. Can, can you tell us anything about that project? <laughs> it's Disney, that's why. <laughs> Are you in it? Yes, <laughs> Ajah, can I can I ask what it's like to be part of the MCU? Now that is a very that's a very good question to, to, to get the scoop out of me. No, 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 no. I mean, it's it's a wonderful experience. It's a it's um it was good fun. Uh, the cast that I worked with, the people that I worked with, it was it was very good fun. But I'm sorry, you know, I cannot say anything more than that at this point in time. <laughs> no worries. Now this show, Fawad, when whenever it it lands, uh, is hopefully going to be a major step forward in terms of representation, in terms of inclusion, and you know, um, Riz Ahmed speaks very passionately about the need to sort of um, turn around this toxic representation of Muslims in media, in entertainment. Is this something that propels you as an actor? Uh, I just feel that it's not a job to preach philosophy. 
you can reach experiences, but as soon as you start to, I don't know how, how you take this, but this is my philosophy as a as a producer, as an actor, as a part of as 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 one of the one of the many people who are involved in the entertainment industry. I don't feel that it's our position to preach philosophy or preach morality to our audience. Or tell them to change their point of views, to bring it more in, in alignment with our point of views. Um, you can definitely tell a story and an experience. And in telling that experience, if the audience takes something back with them, um, which they feel that, like, yeah, you know, like I haven't seen things from this point of view. Uh, that's another thing. But otherwise, then something starts turning into propaganda, and propaganda is always good. Yeah. So that is something that I I like to live by when I'm making the choices that I make when it comes to work. That whatever I choose, it should steer far away from trying to um, very visibly trying to form an opinion in the in the, in the viewer's mind. That kind of makes me jittery, and I, I don't even like watching uh, work that kind of gives that gives that impression. So I said but, I, that that's probably my guess. But for you had said that uh, you know in in an interview I talked about how politics widens the gap between our countries and how artists can actually bridge that gap. Uh, given the current state of politics and policies, <clears throat> what would you like art and artists to do? I would love for them to work together. Mm. And this is other fights is other mechanics. What this is other mechanics. What what more can I say? Yeah. Um, I would love for, for artists to collaborate and work together. It is an educational experience. It definitely is. It increases your exposure and your understanding of people from different parts of the world. Um, and yes, it it fosters friendship. It fosters relationships. And the, the things that we look for, you know, more peaceful times. So I think in every in every way, it's 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 very beneficial uh, because of that. So yeah. yeah. For the conversation around you um, is so much about your handsomeness. Okay, uh, about how good looking you are. No, no, hear me out. <laughs> Don't start laughing. No. Have you ever felt objectified or has it ever gotten in the way? Have you ever lost a role because you're just too pretty for it? No, I don't think so. I think I, if I lost a role, I was not good enough for it. I don't think it was because I was too pretty for it. Um, but there's much, there are many more beautiful faces in the world and they land all the roles that they want to. Uh, so I don't think that can be an excuse. Um, at least I didn't feel it. I didn't feel it that way. If I wasn't good enough for performer, and that's probably why I didn't get the role. Or maybe if I wasn't suited for the role, that's why sure. I didn't get the role. So being objectified, I think everyone at some level likes being objectified as long as it doesn't cross a very thin line and, and become offensive. So yeah, I don't think that's any part of it. You're good with it. I'm okay. I'm you saying that as a compliment. I don't think that. But if that is the case, then I don't think it's ever going. You know, um, I saw this interview you did where you talked about how you met your wife, Sadaf, when you were 17. Um, and you married her when you were 24. And you said, she's the first woman in my life. And I hope she's also the last. And so in a sense, you've grown up together. Um, you know, and, and uh, she's, of course, a very successful designer she runs a bridal design studio you're both famous people uh, what do you do power to nurture this relationship in a profession which is so turbulent yeah, i think uh, i think we've been very patient with one another i mean it'd be wrong to say eh, that we don't get into arguments if we haven't fought uh, how bad or how light the argument or how intense it's been, um, but um, yes, I think we've also faced very difficult times when it comes to that, but we kind of powered through. And I think more than just being a husband and wife, because we've known each other since our teens, 
uh, I think we've also grown together as, as friends. In some ways, that is kind of unhealthy. Right? But Why? we are our best friends as well. Well, I mean, because then your world becomes just about you. Mm. And then you can't get out of each other's faces. <laughs> and I think everyone's had a taste of that during Corona times, uh, being locked down at home. So, uh, our, like, you know, like the, the profile of friends and, 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 uh, expand when you have such a close bond at home. So, but on the flip side, I think it's extremely healthy because there's a lot of love that goes around in our house. Like everyone's constantly, you know, like in physical contact with her. And there's, and yeah, we spend a lot of time together. Um, and I think because of that, because of being friends, because of being more than a husband and wife, I think that's what's contributed to this relationship lasting so long. But uh, I hope that continues. I hope that continues. You know, she said um, on an Instagram live that you're an exceptionally good cook. Ah, yes. I, I, I'd like to think I'm a good cook. I'd like to think I'm a good cook. So is there a signature Fawad Khan dish? No, there isn't. So actually what happened was that there's this friend of mine who's a, um, uh, who's a hairstylist, Shamal Qureshi, um, and he runs this, the franchise of, of, of salons. So he is an enthusiast cook, you know, like an enthusiast chef. And he'd actually taken courses. He'd done uh, short courses in cooking and, and, and pastry making and, and all of that stuff. And he'd call us over every weekend. You know, I've made something to so come and eat. So there'd be like a it, there'd be like an event at his house, and there'd be like a proper three course, four course meal or something. And I I just look at the cooking. I'm like, this is amazing. I wish I could do something like that. And I was like, I was a kid from childhood that I would do something, do something, do something, spend time in the kitchen. After that, I was like, you know what? I'm going to start doing this as well. And I started realizing that the whole process of Chopping up vegetables and preparing the ingredients and all that is so therapeutic that I wouldn't realize that I'm going to get to the kitchen. They like the food, but they say you take too long to cook it. So I am very slow, but I, I, think, um, I think I can uh, manage things. So I, I basically, if I'm just watching TV, if I'm watching something on YouTube, I'll just grab a recipe from there. I'll search it online and I'll look for the best options. What are the reviews? And I'll just have a go at it. And then I'll tailor that recipe uh, to whatever you know uh, people like in the house. So everything from chickpea curry and coconut, uh, as chickpea and coconut curry, to like prawn spaghetti, to spaghetti bolognese, um, shepherd's pie, and, and even done palak paneer. So I've like everything. But do it with a lot of love. So I think we'll go out there based on. That's very impressive. That is amazing. Uh, you know, a man who cooks is a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so my wife is, has been saying that to me. So they've been saying that to me recently. She's like, I think you now can open up a restaurant. I'm like, are you sure? Um, so she was like, yeah. It's like, it's like constantly doing something and the, the flavor is also enhancing the time. So I might just do that. That's my retirement plan. I'll open up a restaurant and I'll retire from that. After many, many years, we hope. Tell me, Pawan, also about the next big story, uh, this platform you launched for writers. Uh, what, what's the ambition and how, how do you want to make it work? Uh, so the next big story was basically, uh, we've been going through some ideas and I think the credit goes more to my colleague, my partner, Saan Khalid. He kind of push for this idea, which is um, putting out, finding, because there's, there's now a handful of writers. And with the same writers, a problem on I'm sure those writers also realize that. I mean, they've done brilliant work. Their work is golden. It's classic. But after a little, you start repeating yourself. You get caught in the cycle of playing with the same characters. And there are a lot of factors that influence that. Um, it's a TV channel. It's a, it's a film producer who feels that this formula works. So let's try to do this thing again. 
So you'll basically be playing with, with four ingredients and just recycling them again and again and again eventually. And they get caught in that cycle. And because of that, I've always felt that there is a lack, there's a dearth of, of fresh and new content. And a big reason for that is just like when we were musicians, everyone wanted to be a guitarist at, at one point, either a vocalist or a guitarist. And you could see that in Lahore. So what do you want to be in a band? I want to be a guitarist, so I want to be a vocalist. No one wanted to uh, be a, a bass guitarist, a bassist, or a drummer. Um, and that, I feel, is the same problem that the entertainment or the, the uh, acting industry or the film industry or the drama industry is based. That everyone wants to be an actor. Everyone wants to be a director. But there are very few people who want to actually do uh, up change or that. That, that, yeah. that trend is now changing. They want to be a writer, a BOP, or any other, you know, cog in the wheel that makes it go round. And which is a very important part and very fun part. Mm -hmm. Even production, like production, I think, Sometimes it gets confused with just financing a project rather than the producer, I think, kind of nurtures the project like a baby, you know, and kind of gives it all the, the nutrients that it needs to, to reach its final form. So writers, ki case mein, uh, Hazan had said, ki, yeah, this, that's how about we do this concept of the next big story where people write synopsis and uh, they write stories and film concepts and they send them in. And we kind of encourage that activity by handing out a prize in the end. I was like, why not? Let's do that. So that kind of came from a place of, you know, that we need content. Yeah. And there's a need to also uh, nurture writers. So let's, you know, we can kill two birds with one stone that way. And we went ahead with it. And we got, uh, in our first round, we got around 40, 50 entries. We have a winner. Unfortunately, the whole ceremony and the thing with giving the prize and all that has not happened because corona times and now when things are getting back so i think we're gonna uh, finally put out the result and hopefully we'll have a, a, a season two of that but i wouldn't want it to end at just the next big story i would like it to happen uh, i would like it like for 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 lighting departments yeah. for tech departments there should be things like that where there should be workshops where you call in people and you're able to exchange ideas and learn from them and teach them something in a way as well because you know, living in the kind of limitations that we do, I think that kind of enhances our ability to cope with situations with what we call jugaars. And that kind of stuff, a lot of people, I think in the West, uh, are not so, you know, they're not so aware of that. Mm -hmm. so I think, uh, especially, again, between India and Pakistan, this would be a great trade of talent. Yeah. Learning the technology and sort of, uh, you know, exchanging ideas would be a great thing. So next big story is one such, uh, you know, cog in the wheel of, of um, uh, evolving the entertainment industry. And I hope that we can sort of tap other areas as well. Got some great sound recorders now as well in Pakistan. And I would like for them to actually impart their, their knowledge on, uh, other people who would be interested in coming to this field. So yeah. That's what it would be for. Do you, do you feel, for given the enormous success you have, do you also have a sense that you want to give back? Hmm. To be very honest, I feel, when you say give back, how, how do you mean? Exactly like this, like, like the next big story. You know, this is a way to also give back to the industry. Well, I think that I, so I'll be very honest. I think it always comes from a very um, selfish place. Uh, it's not a very selfish act. I feel that again, if, if things improve, it'll generate opportunities for me. As for well. everyone, of That's course. First yeah. That's just one part of it. And I think the second part is that don't let this, you know, like this legacy of good work die. Yeah. Um, because let's suppose if someone just comes around in the future and wants to become a part of the industry, it should be better than this, uh, not lesser than this. Yeah. So I think, yes, in that way, giving back uh, uh, 
is an important uh, part of getting what you get from the industry as well. But I just feel like a lot of people kind of, sometimes people you know, make it a point that you must give back, you must give back, you must give back. It's like, no, you don't have to if you don't want to. It's a good thing if you do. Yeah. But don't make it you have to give back. You have to give back. And you don't know what exactly you're giving back. So be aware of it. If you can, do it. And if it lasts, then good. Okay, last question for one. You know, a few months ago, uh, I did an interview with Ali Sethi. Uh, and, and he said, <laughs> it was just lovely. He said, my advice to all Indians and Pakistanis listening to this interview is, please, easy ho jai. He said, hum, hum bahut Pakistan mein bolte hai, please, easy ho jai. And mm-hmm. I just thought that was lovely because it, it just sort of encapsulates everything. He said, for the sake of love and language, we are better than this. So please, easy ho jai. Do you have any advice for folks on your side and on mine? Well, first of all, I think that's such a lovely thing. Uh, easy ho jai. I think it's such a nice way of saying so yeah. much, not saying so much as well. So um, I, I think that in it, if I have any, if I don't have anything else to say, I think easy ho jai is... Uh, you know, uh, credit goes to Ali City for coining the phrase. But um, I've spent time in India as well. And Chitra Limited, I have seen in the city during promotions and all of that. I've only felt love there. So, I think that a little bit of a misnomer or a Misunderstanding that is just like जिसको कहते हैं ना वो चाय के ऊपर झिल्ली होती है जम जाती है इट्स प्रॉब्लम उतनी के बराबर है बाकी जो अंदर है जो मैंने देखा है एंड आई एम नॉट लाइंग अबाउट इट आई हैव नो रीजन टू लाइ अबाउट बिकॉज अगर इन चीजों से फायदा उठाना हो तो बहुत सालों से उठा रहा हो सो आई एम जस्ट सेम दैट I have only seen, and even in Pakistan, like I said, that there is this interest, this intrigue. And similarly, when I'd be there, when I'd be in India, and in and in a very cute, inquisitive way, and you know, saying kya mere mama kya ki khala ki ye ki wo ki wahan se hai, Lalpur se hai, wo and then yahan se kya oh wo wahan se Patiala se hai. So this whole exchange of stories, like being in the middle of it and hearing it from both sides, I feel that people are easy. Oh, again, for you, that thing which I give to Chile, which comes out here, which is braver and it's not that bad. The good parts we don't see because of that cover on top, and there's a lot of it. There's a lot of it there. Yeah, I agree. I agree. We live in hope, Fawad. Good things will come. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I cannot wait to see this show whenever it whenever it drops, because I don't even know when that's happening. No one has said anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it'll happen soon. It'll happen much sooner than my films. That I guarantee. <laughs> uh, and I hope to see it soon too. And thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Not at all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, if you like this video, please subscribe to Film Command.